Hello, I'm Dean Karstens, and this is Dean's N-Scale Trains. A while ago, I did a video on my capacitive discharge units, and there was a few questions that popped up. So I decided to do this second video, explaining things a little bit more technically than I did before, hopefully doing a better job and explaining this unit. If after watching this video you still have questions or think you can't build one on your own, there are several sites with more information or offering commercial units for sale. Here are some examples. Note, I'm not associated with any of these companies. But first I want to talk briefly about how you connect an Atlas switch control unit to your switches. This is a schematic for connecting an Atlas switch control to an Atlas switch machine. You start out with a power supply. They recommend 12 to 15 volts, AC or DC. The two wires go into these two connections and the three wires go to the switch, switch machine. The switch machine contains two solenoids, that are, that's so the coils of wire, that drive a rod magnetically back and forth depending on which side is selected. And to use it, you move this button in the in the requisite direction and press it. The problem is if you hold it too long it will burn out these coils. They recommend uh, not pressing the button for longer than one second so you have to be careful. That's the major problem with this controller. You can actually drive two or three amps through a coil in a typical configuration which can rapidly just heat it up to the point of destruction. So first I want to talk about how a capacitor is charged through a resistor. In my example, I've got a 12 volt DC power supply connected through a charge resistor, resistance of 50 ohms. The capacitance in my example is a 3000 microfarad capacitor. When the voltage is applied, the positive voltage is applied to the positive side of the capacitor, it starts filling up with voltage. Think of it as a cup filling with water. The voltage rises with time according to this graph. The time constant is the product of the resistance times the capacitance, which in our case works out to 0.15 seconds. This is how the voltage varies with time for our example. In one time constant, which is 0.15 seconds, it goes to 63% of the final value. At two time constants, it's 95%. At three, it's 98%. And at four time constants, or about a second, it's up to 99%. So let's now talk about the discharge part of the cycle. In our case, the discharge resistor is the coil on the switch machine, and we have a momentary contact switch. When you close it, the charge rapidly is depleted through the resistance according to this curve. In this case, the RC time constant is 12 one thousandths of a second, almost instantaneous. So the switch is rapidly operated. So how do you determine the resistance and the capacitor value? It's a balancing act. The higher the charging resistor is, the slower the charge up under the capacitor. But the higher the charging resistor, the less the current is through the coil at discharge when the, when the capacitor is finally discharged. So you limit the resistance through the coil, which helps protect it. The higher the capacitor, the slower the charge up, but the higher the capacitor, the better the operation. This is most important when you have less reliable turnouts. If they're dirty, then you might need a higher capacitor. These are the values that I've found that provide a good compromise. Use a resistance value of 50 to 100 ohms, a capacitor value of 3000 to 5000 microfarads. These values should provide you with a good starting point. So on the left here is a table on various time constants for resistance between 50 and 200 ohms and capacitance between 1000 and 5000 microfarads. For our example, 50 and 3000, we have 0.15. On this side, we have the table of uh, we have the wait times of three times the time constant, which goes to 95% of the value. As you can see for our example, you should wait for about a half of a second. So this is the final diagram for my 
my capacitive discharge circuit. We start with a power supply of 12 to 16 volts DC. Make sure that you match the polarity of the power supply to that of the capacitors. That is, wire the positive lead from the power supply to the positive side of the capacitors and the negative to the negative. If you don't do that, it's possible to blow up your capacitors and destroy them. You can determine the, de determine the polarity if it's not listed on the side of your Walmart, Walmart with a vo volt ohmmeter. Here I've got four resistors in parallel, 220 ohms. That gives you a final resistance of 55 ohms and three 1000 microfarad 35 volt capacitors. As I said, this gives something that works with my machines. I've wired this to four Atlas switch control units, but you can add as many Atlas switch control units as you want. Here's a photo of my original switch control board using four Atlas switch control units. So this is what the top of my capacitive discharge unit looks like. And here's the bottom of the unit. I've talked about this in a previous video that I've referenced down below. Lately I've gone to these small momentary contact single pole double throw switches which you can buy on Amazon. I've used these to replace the less reliable Atlas switch control unit. And this is what my switch control board looks like with these momentary contact switches. They came with these rubber uh, covers which I went ahead and used although they weren't, they weren't necessary. So here's a diagram of the capacitive discharge circuit with these four momentary switches. The wires down below, the three wires, green, black, and red, go to each switch machine. Again, make sure you match the polarity of the power supply to that of the polarity of the um, capacitors. So that's it for capacitive discharge units. I hope I've answered all your questions. If not, please put your question in the comments below. As always, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, Deans and Scale Trains. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.